Hi, I'm Rick Bushell, and welcome again to Invincible Painting Basics. Now, I know they've got a different background. I'm still trying to experiment with all kinds of stuff, but let's just stick to the content of what I'm trying to get across to you guys, and uh, we'll be, I think we'll be fine. In this, in this video, before we actually get our hands dirty and start painting, I want to go over the worst of do-it-yourselfers' bad habits. Getting just some of these habits out of your repertoire will help you become a more confident, much better, and efficient painter. A better skill set. The first bad habit I want to go over with you guys is the way we dip our paintbrush. Okay, this is so relevant to good painting that I've mentioned this in many of my previous videos. But it seems everyone, uh, particularly do it yourselfers, don't know this little trick, and it's so simple. After dipping your paintbrush, one just simply taps the brush on one side of the tin and then the other. No scraping. This keeps your brush loaded with paint and stops it from dripping. It is that simple. Yeah, I know. And every reality TV makeover program that they show on television, people scraping off the paint on the edge of the paint tin. Okay, if you're comfortable with this, well, it's not the end of the world and by all means do it. Okay, you'll still get your job done. Okay, but it's going to take hundreds, if not thousands of more dips with your paintbrush. It's okay for do-it-yourselfers, but certainly not practical for the professional. But if you can get out of this habit, so much the better for you. I can tell you as a professional, I hardly ever do the tap. It's more of a flick, which is even faster, but another story for another time. Moving along, the next thing I want to cover is masking tape. The most concerning thing here is how do-it-yourselfers rely on masking tape simply to cut in. I can tell you, compared to do-it-yourself as a real professional painter, it would rarely, if ever, use masking tape to cut in. Okay, It's used more for capturing paint splatter and not cutting in. Now, as an example, I would use masking tape for cutting in uh, maybe once a year, and the situation would be something like uh, it's a very little tight spot between something that you can't get paint on. That's about it. So it's just trying to cut in a small strip of wall or something like that. Okay. Now, uh, this would be one of those times where even I would scrape most of the paint off the paintbrush, okay, just so there's very, very little paint on there. Uh, I'll try to get a, a, an example of that for you guys. Now, I know it's hard to change habits, but if you could change only this one thing, you will literally save yourself an enormous amount of time, okay? Imagine taping off glass panels on a French door, okay? I think you get the idea. Now, I'll show you more on how I mask and why I mask in certain situations in the upcoming makeover videos. Right now, next on my list of do-it-yourself bad habits is the drop cloth. The cover is used to cover floors, bench tops, and the like. What I see the most is people actually using only one, maybe two drop cloths. Not near enough, and then it's usually old bed sheets or towels. And that's not the end of the world. Again, never enough even to cover one floor. Worse, do-it-yourselfers use plastic as drop cloth. This is probably the worst thing you could possibly use. You're painting, uh, you drip paint on the plastic, and then you leave the room to answer the phone or get a cup of tea, whatever. Uh, from walking on the paint dripped on the plastic, uh, and the paint takes a lot longer to dry because it's on plastic, you walk through it and then it's on your floors where you now need to clean it off. The bed sheets are just as bad, but in another way. They don't stop paint from seeping through. Uh, and if you walk onto drip paint, it literally gets mashed right through the sheet, okay? Right through to the floor you're trying to protect from paint. <laughs> Worse still, you don't even know it that it's been done until you remove the coverings. Now it's on your tiles or carpet and it's dry and much harder if not almost impossible to clean up. Answer, you use both and more. Put your plastic down and put your sheets and towels over the plastic and make sure you have enough to cover the entire room. And that includes the furniture if you have it. And then you have also one more for when you walk out of the room. This is where you check the bottoms of your shoes for wet paint. You may have, like you might have stepped on. If you have wet paint on the bottoms of your shoes, it's only a matter of taking them off. Now, if your painting project consists of a new dwelling with no flooring, well, then you have a lot less to worry about. Now, I don't expect anybody to go, go out there and purchase half a truckload of painter's drop, okay? But if you have one, or maybe two, they come in real handy. I have a truckload, of course, but I also have loads of old bed sheets, and I use these mainly for bench tops and furniture. I also use plastic to cover furniture. Okay, number four on my list is the way do-it-yourselfers roll. 
or use the roller. And again, you don't get any professional tips on the makeover programs on television. You see people rolling walls with just <laughs> the roller, no extension handle uh, whatsoever. But they do show you the famous Z or the W procedure. Okay, what the heck is that about? I, I have no idea. Uh, I, I find this hilarious. At, at this is no way a real professional painter would roll walls. And if you did, I'd fire you. I don't have any idea where this nonsense even started. Uh, probably somebody, almost certainly, by uh, someone on one of these makeover programs thinking they knew what they were doing but with no idea whatsoever what they really are doing. Okay, but it must look like, to the novice, very professional and the trick to painting walls. Take my word for it. It's not. This is not okay, guys. Okay, don't do it. But put simply, you need an extension pole for when you roll. Okay, it's easier on your back. It speeds up the process immensely, and you now have better control, mostly because you're using two hands now. Now, let me put some emphasis on control. With an extension pole, you have a lot more control. It's much easier to work with paint, and you will find it much faster. Watch my two videos on rolling walls right here, okay, guys? Now, the next thing with rollers, don't buy the cheapest roller in the store. You'll have so much splatter, you won't believe the amount of paint that just flies off the roller, okay? They really are bad. They're just cheap and nasty. I'm not going to delve any deeper into the benefits of using an extension pole and decent rollers. I've, I've covered this extensively in my two other previous videos that I've mentioned earlier. If you haven't seen them, I highly recommend watching them. It's going to give you guys some ideas. Okay, They're It's full of good information on exactly how a professional uses and controls the paint with a roller. Okay, now, buckets and tins. Sometimes I think do-it-yourselfers don't even know what these are. I see DIY painters using glass jars butter and ice cream containers, even plastic bottles with the tops cut off, and almost anything else but the proper tins when painting. Then there are the ones who just open up a tin of paint and start painting right from a full can. Another bad mistake. A proper tin can be just a simple, cleaned out old paint tin. It will be so much easier for you and quicker, and again, you have more control. Now, although there are many, many more bad habits I can go on about, I'm going to cover just one more. And that is brushes. If you spend all of $3.69 on a pack of three different size brushes, you know, that you, you, we've all seen them, you're doing yourself no favors at all. I'm pretty sure you'd be uh, $3.69 better off if you just use a stick. I'm serious. These cheap plastic brushes are absolutely useless. My opinion, but it also comes from 40 years of experience. They don't hold paint. They don't hold their shape. There is virtually no control. You can't cut in. Okay, uh, need I go on? I think you get it. I think you get the idea. You don't have to buy the absolute best brushes out there either, okay? But the more you spend, the better your brush. It's that control thing I'm always going on about. Cheap brush, no control. Good brush, complete control, okay? Try cutting in with a cheap brush, then a good brush. The comparison is like night and day, chalk and cheese. The other part of brushes is this. It's cleaning and looking after your brushes. I wouldn't have come across many do-it-yourselfers that clean their paint brushes with any sort of adequacy at all. Yet there seems to be thousands of different ways to clean a brush by do-it-yourselfers. Sorry, if you get into if you get onto YouTube, all I can suggest is to watch my video here. Okay, on how to clean a brush. It's simple, it's fast, but you do need a wire brush. Purchase a wire brush when you pick up your paint brushes. As far as I'm concerned, you cannot clean a brush without one. Okay, watch my three-part series on paint brushes if you haven't already, uh, and if you're really new to painting. These were my very first videos I created, so the tech side, uh, you'll see, it's severely lacking, but the content is good, and just what a novice painter needs to know. I explain in detail the types of brushes, where to use the different types, how to clean them, why you don't throw away the jackets they come in, and how important the jackets are, how to make jackets if you have thrown them out, how to clean a paintbrush using the wire brush, etc. It's all there. Uh, kind of uh, boring stuff, I know, but it's like anything. The more you know, the better you can do. Those are the worst habits by do-it-yourselfers, in my opinion, and if you address only two or three of these, I guarantee your painting skills will improve immensely. Uh, you'll be quicker and more efficient. And if you don't, well, that's okay, too, okay? It's your project, and you have to be comfortable with what you're doing. So I don't put this out there like it's the be-all and end-all, you know, you have to do these things, okay? It's not like that at all. Whether or not you take these tips on board, it's entirely up to you. If you're becoming a professional, uh, then these are a must-have. In the next upcoming video, we start to get our hands dirty. The fun begins. 
I delve deep into preparation, how I go about systemizing the prep, what's first, what's after that, and so on. Patching holes of all different sizes, okay, with very little sanding, of course. Uh, that's the good one. Caulking cracks nice and neatly. How I sand ceilings and walls. Yeah, I hear you. I hate sanding, too. Uh, worst part of the job, if you ask me. But it's, it's a must if you want a good paint job. Treating stains prior to painting so they don't bleed through, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. There's lots of stuff. Okay, so there's so much more. Uh, and if you're not a subscriber, then subscribe and you won't miss any of the upcoming videos in this makeover series. Also, during this makeover series, if you do have any questions, write your question below in the comment section or click on Invincible Painting Basics Facebook page icon and ask questions there. This is Invincible Painting Basics. Hope to see you here next time. Happy painting.